vibrant young leader with all the talent that there is, all the values that we hold, and the future looks really bright for the Democratic Alliance. Why do you think so though? What, what is Musi Maimani bringing to the table? Musi Maimani brings a deep and core value set that believes in freedom, fairness and opportunity for all. His life is a product of that. Parents who sacrificed everything to give him an opportunity of a decent education. He used that education and used his freedom and his opportunity to build his life. And he wants the same for everybody in South Africa. And that is what the DA is rooted in. He is the result of the value set we hold. Freedom you can use and that you do use to make the best of your life. Well, he has enjoyed a quite a meteoric rise um, within the uh, Democratic Alliance ranks. A lot of people think he's actually too young and uh, didn't really get enough experience to be able to lead the DA at this critical moment in its, in its history. He's very young and it's very unusual that someone so young would be elected a leader of such a rapidly growing party. But some people just have what it takes. Some people develop what it takes when they're in their 50s, like I hope I did. And some people have their opportunities at a different time of their lives. You can't plan when your opportunities are going to be there. Doors open in life and you walk through them and you make the very best of them. And one quality Musi has in spades, which makes his age for me a non-issue, and that is he recognizes an opportunity, he uses an opportunity, and he's prepared to listen to alternative points of view before making up his own mind and leading from the front. And those are the qualities you want in a leader. Well, there are people who think uh, he's going to be in, he's indebted to you uh, because he owes what he, he's got now in large part to your support and uh, people who believed in you then sort of by extension uh, believed in him. So how much of a, a force do you think you are still going to be in his future and how he conducts um, um, his business? I don't believe in trying to rule from behind or lead from behind. I'm going to do the best job I can as the Premier of the Western Cape and in any way that the new DA leadership wants me to support or to help in whatever capacity I'm there to do it. But I'm not there to try and give advice from the side or second guess or chirp around, absolutely not. I believe in letting people have a chance to do their job. And as leader I've tried to create as many platforms as possible for new leadership to arise. That was my aim. And we've got a great depth and breadth of leadership. One of the good things about my remaining mayor of Cape Town while being leader of the party is that there were so many other platforms for new leaders like Musi and many, many others. You saw them today. Refilwe, Ivan Mayer, all of these people coming up. And it was quite a wonderful thing to see people use their opportunities. So you're not going to be the kind of leader, a former leader was going to like lag behind and try and be uh, a puppet master, so to speak, um, who sort of rules from behind the scenes. I will never be a leader who tries to rule from behind, never. I've got a job of work to do. If I have to go door-to-door -door canvassing, I will do door-to-door -door canvassing. If I have to go fundraising, I will go fundraising. I'm there for South Africa. And being there for South Africa means being there to build an alternative government that is faithful to the Constitution, that ensures freedom, fairness and opportunity for every South African so that your children and my children and our grandchildren, although you're a generation younger than I am, but that my great-grandchildren and your grandchildren can live in peace and harmony as equal citizens of a wonderful country. Were there all moments, uh, I mean, during the course of the past couple of days when you felt maybe, just maybe, I made the wrong decision? Okay. No, no. I spent a long time thinking about this decision. A long time. I knew when I was elected I would only stay 10 years at most. 
I think two five-year terms is fine. But then I was wondering, do I go now at eight years or do I wait for those other two years? And I spent about six months thinking about it. And about a month ago, I thought, now's the time. Kinako, as we say in South Africa. And then I knew, and then I did it. So you weren't pushed? No, I definitely. As some people have suggested. I definitely was not pushed. One last uh, thing I wanted to ask you before I let you um, go. Alistair Sparks' remarks yes. yesterday. He couldn't find a single black leader worthy uh, of his praises that, or that he thought was smart enough. What did you think of the, what did you make of the statement that he made when he was actually paying tribute to you? Alistair was talking about his years as a parliamentary journalist. And then he said he'd seen leaders from Def Milan right through to Jacob Zuma, but then he spoke about the leaders in Parliament that he had covered as an active journalist at that time. We all know what a passionate supporter Alistair was of democracy. We all know that he was a passionate supporter of the ANC and in fact advised Nelson Mandela on communication strategies and other strategies as an advisor for not as a journalist. He knew and he acted in every way to expose the evil of apartheid. Evil people are not necessarily stupid people. And there is quite a difference between saying that someone is intelligent and saying you support them. Some of the most evil people in our history have been some of the most clever. And that is what is so frightening. So he was not in any way paying a tribute to Fervut. In fact, he said in his speech, apartheid was a crime against humanity. And very few people have done as much as Alistair Sparks in journalism to expose that crime against humanity as he did. So you didn't find anything wrong or offensive in what he said? Objectionable. Look. Look. He was speaking as a journalist who'd covered a various era. It wasn't my speech. We all know how he admired Nelson Mandela, how he in did everything he could to get the he ANC on that, But that's not to say he thinks he was smart. Of course he thought he was smart, but he wasn't the uh, leader that he particularly covered because he wasn't a journalist at that time. And we must read his remarks in the context of what he was describing as a journalist at a particular time. Well, Angela, thank you very much and best of luck. Thank you very much. For your thank you very much. Thanks very much. Well, Helen Zille, the outgoing leader of the Democratic Alliance.